have seen in previous videos how grammatical information in the form of an attribute value pair can be shared between a lexical entry and a node above the lexical entry in the constituent structure. We can apply the same principle to all the words in our tree. But what about the node above the noun constituent? This can be handled in essentially the same way. We want the preterminal node above the noun to have an equation that says that the node above it should have the same category. So we want to write a descriptive equation that says that a particular node's mother must have the same value for category as the daughter node. We use the asterisk to represent the node in question, then apply it to the lambda function to link to the right structure and reference the attribute category which we will start abbreviating as cat to save space. On the other side of the equation, we can say the same thing, except that we change the input to refer to the mother node, an asterisk with a circumflex. We now have a descriptive equation which says that the value of the category associated with a particular node is identical to the value of the category associated with the node above it. Where does this equation go? We will avoid trying to paste it directly into our constituent structure, as that would be problematic. Technically, a node is just a position in the structure. What we can do instead is make this equation part of our generalizations about what type of constituents are allowed in this language. These generalizations are called phrase structure rules. The word phrase is sometimes used as a synonym of constituent in syntax. We know that at least one type of phrase structure that is allowed in English has a determiner followed by two adjectives and a noun. For now, let's not make any further generalizations and just write out this pattern as one acceptable pattern in the language. Instead of writing out the lambda structures for each one of these nodes, we'll just use the category value as a label for the node in place of an asterisk and we'll abbreviate to just one or a few letters to save space. So let's take this as a general rule or a constraint on the grammar that says we can have a constituent with nodes of each of these categories. We can now add a further requirement to this rule by writing equations below a particular node, much like we did for lexical entries. We'll take the equation we already wrote for the head noun and write it here below the noun node, the head node in the structure. Now, if we apply this rule or constraint to our constituent structure, it will be satisfied when the node above the head node has the same value in its lambda structure. This is one example of how phrase structure rules can constrain what types of constituent structures are permitted in a language. One final note about how phrase structure rules are normally written. Instead of writing an annotation below the head node, it is standard practice to copy the category of the head node and write it as a separate node to the left of the constituent followed by a right arrow. This representation is a holdover from syntactic theories of the 1960s, and it can be a bit misleading, but it does save some room for other equations that we will want to add to our phrase structure rules as we further explore how to represent grammatical structures in LFG in future videos.